Alright, what's up internet? So, we're filming this during the time of Corona and kaya tayo nakamask ngayon. Focus on positive news, especially para sa mga mahilig sa computer, mga gamers. There is actually good news coming. AMD is scheduled to release its 4th gen CPUs and this is the Zen 3 architecture. It looks like AMD is still on a roll. The performance increases will be just as dramatic as what we saw from Ryzen 1 to Ryzen 2 and then Ryzen 2 to Ryzen 3. So AMD is on track to deliver the same performance increases. And considering a lot of people are quite happy with, you know, R2, Ryzen 2, Ryzen 3, we expect to be happy as well when the Ryzen 4 comes out this year. Rumor has it they will be announced officially September this year and then they will probably be released around October and because the Philippines is not a major market, we might start seeing them locally around November or December. But definitely the Ryzen 4s will have, you know, will be faster and will supposedly consume less wattage as well. The bad news is they won't support DDR5. So if you're looking to upgrade to DDR5, you might need to wait. You might need to wait for the motherboard manufacturers to come up with you know, new boards because you will need new boards for DDR5. And the good news is it's still AM4. So the socket is still AM4 just as AMD promised. So it is backward compatible with the Ryzen 1 and onward motherboards. Although they're not all backwards compatible because some motherboard manufacturers are having a hard time fitting all of the instructions onto the BIOS chipset. It's a bit technical, but the socket itself, AM4, is backward compatible, but some boards, because of the limitations of storage, won't be backward compatible with the Ryzen 4s. But this is the last time we're gonna be seeing an AMD release with AM4 because they they have confirmed that Ryzen 5 will be using a different socket. So this is the swan song of the AM4. But kudos to AMD that they have kept the same, that they have kept it at AM4 for their entire run of Ryzen so far. Ryzen 1 all the way up to 4 have used the AM4 socket. And this is in contrast to Intel, which, you know, basically changes sockets a lot more and of course this is harder for people who want to upgrade just the cpu instead and of course every time a socket changes it's that much harder to upgrade it gets more expensive so kudos really to amd for getting performance as well as managing to keep the same socket team red is on a roll and it looks like it will continue its impressive performance later on in the year with ryzen 4. Still keeping with AMD news, they are also scheduled to announce and release the update to their graphics card. It's called Navi 2 or Big Navi or RDNA 2. And just a side note on the naming conventions. Actually, I think this is one area where AMD can improve because, because their naming structure is really confusing. It's not like NVIDIA. NVIDIA does a good job. There's the NVIDIA 1000 line, so that's the 1660, the 1080, 1070, 960, and things like that. And you know what you're getting. AMD for graphics cards has a very convoluted naming system. And you know, they, again, they can't figure it out. This, The latest upcoming is called Big Navi, Navi 2. Unlike their CPU line, which is super easy. There's the Ryzen 1, followed by the 2, 3, and 4. And I wish AMD would adopt something like that instead of flip-flopping with the names because the names are important. The, the lines or what you call the lines make it a lot easier for consumers to understand that yes, I want this Navi 2 because it's faster than Navi. Is Navi 2 different from Big Navi? What's our DNA 2? And the more terms you pile on the consumer, the harder it is for him to figure out that this is the car that I need don't make the consumer think anymore because if he has to think too much, he's just gonna go run to NVIDIA where everything is a lot more straightforward. But that aside, yes, Navi 2 looks to be better for AMD. Finally, Navi 2 will allow them to have 4K gaming, which currently only NVIDIA is capable of doing. The performance as well is supposed to be a lot faster, 50 to 75% is the leaks or the news that is circulating. 
So, at least, and most importantly, it will finally have ray tracing or basically RTX on. Something that NVIDIA popularized and really jumped on with the 2000 line, the RTX 2000 line. So finally, AMD is catching, playing catch up, yes, but at least with the Navi 2, it looks like they will be at par with NVIDIA. But that won't be for long because as I'll talk about, NVIDIA's 3000 line looks set to blow. <laughs> it looks set to surpass all of the performance specs now. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna leapfrog over everything else. So, AMD might tie NVIDIA's 2000 line, but when the Ampere 3000 line of NVIDIA comes along, that's gonna be a different story, and we're gonna talk about that later. Navi 2 is set to launch sometime around October, so again, maybe around December, we can expect the cards to reach us here in the Philippines. And interestingly enough, around October is when the PS5 is coming out, and the Xbox Series X. <laughs> I don't know why, again, I don't know why they make these names so complicated. But what's nice about, or what's interesting about the next-gen consoles, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, is that they also make use of the Navi 2 for their graphics processing. And if, you know, the architectures are basically the same, then it might be easier for console games to be ported to the PC. So we might be seeing a lot of a lot more of porting from console exclusive items maybe they'll make their way to the pc faster so you know we ps in particular has a lot of nice exclusives like horizon zero dawn which only recently got ported to the pc and since now the next gen consoles will be sharing a lot of our graphical architecture with navi 2 it might be easier for game makers to port them to the pc Assuming that, you know, a lot of people do buy Navi 2 GPUs, so, you know, those will be the ones supported. Okay, shifting over to the Intel side of things, Intel is set to release the 10th gen Comet Lake desktop CPUs. We've already seen some of them being used in laptops, so there are 10th gen Intel CPUs in laptops already. This is slated the desktop. CPUs are slated to be on hand around second quarter. So we're thinking actually next month, May, perhaps Intel will start releasing them. So as I mentioned, Intel likes changing the socket. So this is not LGA1151, it's LGA1200. And the motherboards that you need will be the Z490 line. Actually, the motherboard manufacturers have been all set to go based on the news. They've been, they've been ready with the Z490 line. However, Intel has held back this particular chipset, the 10th gen, because they have been trying to get better performance with less power because all of the early reports have indicated that the 10th gen Intel generate a lot of heat and they use a lot of power. And so Intel has been trying to cut that down, but apparently they've been unsuccessful because now what we're hearing is that they are just simply going to release the 10th gen CPUs very soon. And just to put it in perspective, the Intel 10th gen are supposedly use as much power as an RTX 2080. So that's around 220 watts and you know, that's a lot of power and Assuming you're going to have a 10th gen and then you're going to have a 2080, that's basically, you know, 440, 480 watts or so. And so you're going to need a good PSU and you're going to need a good cooler if you're going to be upgrading to the 10th gen Intel. Disappointingly, performance is sort of lackluster. Some early specs we've seen, some early leaks. And again, you know, this is all rumor. This is not official, but it seems to tie into what everybody else is saying, they had an i9 10900K versus versus a Ryzen 9 3900X. So the R9 3900X is available now. It's from the current line of Ryzen, it's the third gen Ryzen. It's not the fourth gen Ryzen that I talked about earlier. So a CPU that AMD has available now, stacked up versus a future Intel CPU, 
the AMD actually won. It's actually 7% faster or, you know, roughly than the Intel 10th Gen. So, the Comet Lake 10th Gen Intel looks to be a bit disappointing. And yes, there are people who super love Intel and they might, you know, that might be a reason to upgrade to it. But on its own, all things considered, the 10th gen line will not be the one to convince people to go back to Intel. So Intel is still playing catch up with the Comet Lake line. Someone not playing catch up though is Nvidia. And they are set to release their third or their 3000 series. It's a new graphics architecture. They call it Ampere versus the Turing architecture of the 2000 line. But basically what it promises is much, much faster graphics at a lower, uh, much, much faster graphics for less power. The rumor is, or the early numbers are showing that we will get a 50 to 75% increase in performance with a decrease in power consumption of around 50%. So that's really, across the board, those are great numbers. And you really might want to wait if you're looking to upgrade your graphics card. You might want to wait for the NVIDIA 3000 line because the numbers really are looking quite good. How long will you have to wait? The rumor is that they will be officially announced in August and then they will be available commercially sometime around the end of the year. And, and in fairness to NVIDIA, they really do take care of the gamer segment. You know, they're really pushing the performance. If you're curious, the gaming segment makes up 50% of NVIDIA's revenue. So they know who butters their toast and you know, they really actively try to be, to push the envelope when it comes to graphics cards. So kudos to NVIDIA and you might want to wait for their 3000 series if you're thinking of upgrading. Lastly, we're going to end with memory with RAM. DDR5, we've been hearing about it for a long time, you know, around 2018, that's when people started saying that DDR5 is actually a reality. 2019, bit of news. And finally, in 2020, there has been news that it will be finally in 2020, it has been announced that yes, DDR5 will be mass manufactured this year. So that's gonna so slowly start rolling out the server side builds and then more slowly to consumer end PCs. And DDR5 will require you to buy a new motherboard. Current motherboards do not support DDR5. But what do you get? Basically, DDR5 is offering double the speed. So if roughly DDR4 is around 3,000 200 megahertz. Yes, they are faster, but you know, on the average, 3,200 megahertz. DDR5 is promising 6,400 megahertz, and that is not yet overclocked. So there is significant performance gains associated with the DDR5, but you will need to upgrade your motherboard, and no word yet as to pricing. This should benefit AMD builds because the Ryzen architecture has taken advantage of faster RAMs and RAM size. So generally, the, the faster your RAM, the better your Ryzen builds. And so that can only get better with the upcoming DDR5. So that's it. A lot of interesting things coming for PCs later on in the year. We just need to get through the first part of 2020. And you know, a lot of people are suffering health-wise, a lot of people are suffering economic-wise, business-wise. So the best thing we can do is to follow health protocols. We will beat this thing. And hopefully, once we come out on the other side, there are a lot of interesting hardware to splurge on or that we can experiment with or that we can have fun with. So in the meantime, everyone, stay safe and things to look forward later on. And these were the things to look forward to after we get out of lockdown. So I hope that these basic tips help you. If you found this video helpful, please drop a like and hit the subscribe button. For your PC needs, consider buying from us, Hardware Sugar, at Lazada, or on our website. You can find links in the description below. And thank you for watching. See you next video.